All right, let's get this show on the road. This isn't fun for me, you know. I don't like talking about video games. I can't stand the bloody things. But here's a, a trailer reaction video, which, you know, about a hundred of you like, uh, for the Sony Showcase, uh, which I don't appreciate. I don't like when Sony, Nintendo, Microsoft do these little live streams, these little showcases, because that's just work for me. I don't even like that there's a new console generation coming. That's stuff I have to do in a couple months. Here's a couple months, isn't it? I forget what information Sony did and didn't bloody show at this event because half of the important information was res reserved for Jeff Keighley to tweet about after the show. But anyway, I've collected uh, the most interesting trailers. Uh, Deathloop here being the first one we're looking at. Um, very good gameplay from the looks of it. Look at that, people covered in paint, having their necks broken. I like that stylistic look actually, this sort of characters looking like paint's just been splashed over the top of them. That's kind of a cool visual bit of flair. Um, the gameplay looks real fast, which I like. Uh, lots of environmental traversal. The uh, teleporting stuff looks cool. Or, or rather, the zipping towards people. There's lots of pinks and purples in that, and I like that. God, I can't believe there's a generation change at the end of this year. God, I'm gonna have to get consoles, and then I'm gonna have to turn them on, and set them up, and play games on them, and then do videos on them. Ugh, 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 I hate it. Anyway, that's enough of that bollocks. Let's have a look at more Deathloop. This is the, the, the team that done uh, the, the Dishonored, right? What are their bloody names, Star something? No. It's not Star Citizen, that's that game that's never coming out. That's the project hammer of the PC market, is Star Citizen. So this game got a lot of attention at first because of the the, the style, that sort of 70s style to it. Um, and it's nice to see that the gameplay, which we haven't seen too much of until now, looks to be pretty rock solid at the very least. Bethesda doesn't mess stuff up so much when Bethesda's just the publisher. Uh, you know, if you limit the opportunities for Bethesda to completely screw everything up, you tend to get a good game. They publish a lot of good stuff. Two birds, one stone. One man, one jar. No shoes, no shoelaces, no blood for oil. Dog heads. They got dog heads. Dog head gangs, we've had the paint heads. And we've had the, oh, there goes Alexis, oh no. The paint heads and the dog heads. What heads will we have next? Dickheads, probably. Oh wait, no, we, do, we don't have dickheads next. I've not included the, the Hogwarts game in this particular lineup of trailers. Look at that. Igor gone. That was Igor Sterling. Sterling. That's Andy Warhol at the bottom. You get to kill Andy Warhol. Oh no, he won't like that. He's a bugger for not being dead as Andy Warhol or always was. Very fond of the idea. A lot of people are. A lot of people tend to be uh, pretty cool with the idea of not being dead. Me, I, I could take it or leave it if I'm honest. Which sounds grim, but to be honest, I've got sleeping problems. I could do with the kip. I could do with the lie down. Anyway, death loop. I wouldn't like a death loop. Once, once I, once I put my head down for the night, I don't get me up. <laughs> anyway, and also if you, if if we're going to sort funeral arrangements, just leave me in the woods to be pecked at by crows. Uh, so that's the that's the death death loop and death discussion portion over. Now here is the one that I care about. Here is the game that is like a thousand years old, but it's the thing I'm most excited for for the PS5. Now Demon Souls. God, I loved this game back in the day. I fucking loved it. I had to go to a shop and request it because I don't think they had it displayed. And I got the original Demon Souls that came in the box and had the little book with it. Uh, I was working at Destructoid, I think, at the time. And the reviews editor, or the editor-in-chief had the review of this and didn't score it because it was difficult and they didn't get very far. And that upset me because I, I, I subsequently played it and absolutely loved it. Uh, oh god, that looked like swords was coming out of that knight's bum. Anyway, that's the kind of top-notch reviewing quality I bring to game criticism discourse. So anyway, Demon's Souls, a very special game for me. It was my... I know From Software had done plenty of work before then. It was my first introduction to From was this game. 
um, played it obsessively, actually didn't get to the very end. I did end up um, faltering towards the end. So I'm looking forward to, to getting back into it and maybe writing that particular wrong. Um, but I remember uh, when it first came out, I wrote very glowingly about its multiplayer, um, which which the, the, the Soul series further evolved. But I absolutely loved it. At the time, this was this was really quite quite uh, uh, quite quite notably entertaining to me. Um, the overall oppressive nature of, of Demon Souls married to this indirect multiplayer aspect, for the most part, the, the notes left on the floor, the ghostly visions of other uh, players dying. To me, that that represented an alleviation of the oppression of the game's atmosphere. God, I'm starting to sound almost like I know what I'm talking about. Or I'm sounding very pretentious. Or both, probably both, but anyway. Um, this idea that as oppressive as Demon Souls World is, you're all struggling together, and while you might not be directly communicating outside of getting together for some actual co-op, uh, seeing everyone else dying around you is oddly comforting, because you will be dying a lot, and other people will see you die. And from that, you can all be encouraged that, well, we're all failing together, and and learning together and getting back up and dusting ourselves off. Um, that, that's been my, my read on, on these indirect multiplayer aspects to the Souls series since, since I first experienced them. Um, I truly think they don't get enough credit. Uh, and it's not just, like, like, other games have done that sort of thing. Fable 2, if I recall, had little white glowing dots in the world representing in real time where other people were in the game's world. I'm going purely off memory there, but I think it did something like that. Look at that big demon. By the way, this game looks... Some people have been saying it looks bad. Uh, it doesn't look bad to me. There's also confusion about where, where this game is going because, again, so, Sony's actual showcase was not very informative. And there was discussion that this game was coming to other consoles and PC. The last I saw this morning, Sony said that's not the case. So I don't even know. Um, so, but all I can tell you is I love Demon Souls. Um, just such a delightful game. Hopefully the exploit with the fire demon is still there because I'm all for trapping that thing by that, was it a tree stump? I know, God, I was living in the, God, I wasn't even in the, in my, the main place I was in in Mississippi when it when this came out. I've not long moved to the country. Huh. Such an old game. But yeah, I mean, I've been waiting for this remaster since, uh, well, since forever. Years ago, this, this idea was floated around that they might redo it. And yeah, revitalize the online in this, give it some, hopefully, some uh, quality of life improvements, some gameplay improvements that have been learned from the other Souls games. And I'm all in. Looking forward to it more than any actual quote unquote next gen game. Up next, Final Fantasy and the case of the Curious Cupboard. Final Fantasy 16, which for some reason, now that we're in the Eens, um, maybe it's because it started with, I think, 11 and then 14. I keep expecting these games more and more to be MMOs. So I heard about Final Fantasy 16 because I came to the showcase late because I was. Like playing Spelunky 2, I think. Um, so I came to this conference late and had missed the Final Fantasy 16 trailer and just assumed it was an MMO because I just assumed that on most of them. Uh, for no real reason, you know. Um, so this looks like a Square Enix game. Look, hair everywhere. Hair and, and extravagant costumes, pretty graphics, and nonsense being spoken. And that they're, they're all the hallmarks of a Final Fantasy game. Pretty hair nonsense. In fact, that's just what they should, pretty hair nonsense is what they should call the series. Oh look, it's that classic Final Fantasy theme being played with, with a small string selection. Chocobo, I've seen one of them before. All right, gameplay, looks like a a continuation of 14 and that. If they do 14's gameplay but add some of the tightening that I feel they added to 7 Remake, that's a Marlborough. Oh no, that monster from Final Fantasy. 
So yeah, if they add the tightening up from Final Fantasy VII Remake to this, yeah. Because I liked Final Fantasy XV a lot. I thought some of the, the combat was a little bit, a little too loose and ill-defined, and I felt like Seven Remake like really honed to that formula. But this mix of traditional RPG and real-time combat that Square Enix has been mucking around with for a long fucking time now. Um, I think with Seven Remake, they finally realized the, the idea they've had um, and fully realized that. So yeah, I hope, to, I hope that this is a, a good evolution of that. Square Enix's big problem is, is similar to what Sega's was with Sonic for the longest time, is every time they're onto a winner, they try and reinvent it next time, rather than take what has promise and evolve that and turn it into something that lives up to its promise. It's 7.30 in the morning and I, I barely slept last night, so everything coming out of my mouth could be complete and total gibberish. A lot of people think that anyway, so it won't make much of a difference to most viewers, I don't the think. Legacy of the, crystals. Nom, nom, nom. the legacy of the crystals, it's quite a legacy at this point. Has shaped our history. Big, that's a big bird. And there are big swords. And that's just a big boy, that's a big rock boy. Yeah, fuck that, fuck it, fuck shaping our history with crystals. Alrighty. I, I like that they show gameplay. Usually Square Enix is in love more with the idea of announcing games than actually developing them. So normally it's like, oh yeah, here's a game. We've come up with another bullshit made up name we've pulled out of our ass. I shouldn't say made up name, all words and names are made up, but... A contrived bullshit name that we pulled out of our ass, Fabula Babella, Babella, Vincent Cabella, right? Um, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, it looks like this game's actually being made and won't be out six years from now, so that's good. And it's a PlayStation 5 console exclusive, play has no limits, which you can't say after you've just told us there's literal limits. There's limits! You've just said it's an exclusive! It's li whatever. So this is Oddworld, Soulstorm. Um, uh, oh, oh, Disclosure. I will have a, a voice roll in this game. A, a small voice roll. This trailer's called Moloch Returns. Moloch was the, the villain from the first game. Who was only, if I recall correctly, only referenced in the original Abe's Exodus. That this game's somewhat based on. So yeah, vo um, Hi, voicing Lorne a character Lanning. in this. Oh Great God, it's Lorne Lanning. I don't know why I reacted as if I'd seen a witch in the forest. Lorne Lanning doesn't look like a witch in the forest. Oh, this isn't a full on trailer. A lot of these I've tried to go in sight unseen so you can get my natural, so that theoretically you can get my natural unvarnished reactions, but what you actually get is me just rambling about bollocks. So anyway, um, the original, the Abe's Odyssey remake they did a couple years ago, I was super impressed with. That, that to me was like, this isn't just some redo, this is, this is what a full on remake is, is supposed to, to look and feel like. And hopefully, you know, this is a good continuation of that. It looks like they've, that they've built on what the Abe's Odyssey remake was, where there was a lot of, feeding of original material as well as the familiar and it looks like they've they're really reimagining this one especially you know with this whole stuff with Moloch I don't know if, if that means we'll be seeing the other Molochs uh, the other Gluckens that were in um, in Abe's Exodus Uncle Aslick and the other two The only one I remember was as there were three villainous Glockens and a, a German accented Glucken doctor who was making the, the soul storm, which is the drink made out of Abe's little friends. All right, I don't know why I put this one on. I was Call of Duty, Black Ops 2, Cold War rather, two was years ago. Oh, brilliant, can't wait. Brilliant, can't wait for shooting. I say that as if I'm above 
first person shooters like I'm Jonathan Blow or something. Like I'll do what, what he did that time and come out uh, following some violent game trailers and be like, oh God, look at how shit they are, gang. Now, now let me talk about my game. Um, but anyway, this looks like Call of Duty, doesn't it? Why do they need to show trailers anymore? The people who are being suckered into buying Call of Duty every year will get it, right? Myself included, although I've got special dispensation because it is my job. But I don't have to keep doing that to myself. I could just not. I've not got a boss here, except for the American people um, who elected me into this position. Uh, I don't have to do this. I could just not with Call of Duty Black Ops The Cold War. But I will, and I'll complain about it. Like, it just looks... Like, I know some games get accused of all being the same, and it's not all strictly true and fair, and yeah, there are new stories and things they put into this, but you could show me this clip, and you could show me Modern Warfare from bloody last year, and I wouldn't be able to tell you which is which. I just can't at this point. No point anymore. But anyway, there's only two more left to go. I've done this one, and I've done Resident Evil Village, uh, which will be coming up after this. This is, I think, this is the longest one of the lot. I think only uh, only the Deathloop trailer's given this one a, a run for its money in terms of length. And it's the one I've got very little to say on, except to just continue to to take a little dump, a little round dump on on Activision, Activision Blizzard, publisher of this game that. Uh, is joining the increasing throng of companies charging $70 for next-gen games. Uh, some PS5 titles have also been confirmed for that. I'll have to do another video on that. On that at some point. But not right now. Not right now, we're looking at this shit. So anyway, if you, if you like Call of Duty, then it looks like you will like Call of Duty, the new one. <sighs> There's a reason I saved this until you add at least 10 minutes of passable content before we got to the one I can't be bothered with. Oh, look at that, it's a remote control car. Now suddenly things are good. Better, not good, better. Little remote control car. Gonna g go blow stuff up, marginally better. Imagine what it'd be like to have like things like this in a game that isn't this. That'd be good, wouldn't it? There should be loads of those car, uh, little remote control cars, and you should be able to blow up everything at all times. No matter where in the game you are, no matter how uh, structured the level might be, whether it'll break it or not, you should always have explode your remote control cars. And in multiplayer, everyone gets them. Now that's a game. That's a game all the players are stood still on their little remote controls. And you've got to find the other players and blow them up. Not the actual cars, although I guess you could just scupper things, but you'd have to respawn both cars. That you're driving around looking for the the, the, the players from remote controlling. I've just invented a game, unless someone else has invented it already. If no one else has invented it already, I've just invented a game. And if anyone tries to make it, I will sue your ass. Your ass will get sued. Play has no limits, except for all the exclusives. And, you know, if $60 games were already pretty expensive for you, especially in the second recession of a generation, uh, $70 will probably also be a limit on your play as well. This is Resident Evil Village, which, I mean, I'm a sucker for, for being able to include, being able to ha like include wordplay, uh, meta wordplay into your game title. So Village Chris, with the, you know, the V-I-I -I, uh, for eight. In Village is good for me. I like that. I, I, I always sort of liked it when uh, um, Nintendo stuff would have that. In fact, there was a Resident Evil one of that. It was, uh, I forget what it was, because it, games on the DS would often have like a subtitle with a word that began with a D and a word that began with an S. And there was a Resident Evil one. What was it? Resident Evil uh, Again. Dumpling Surcharge, I think it was called. Whoa! She's so happy. All right. Very messy room. 
No one's having a tidy up. Some sort of monster. Looks almost like a Bloodborne-esque sort of beast kind of character. Because this time, it is werewolves, maybe. I forget what the last... I saw the last trailer. I can't remember anything about it now because I can't, if I'm honest, remember what I... I can't remember what I did half hour ago. The bush is empty. Yet determined to find the berries, the rascal broke free of Mother's I love the, the, the stylistic fairy tale thing. Mother's worried cries Hell, that's a visual style I'd like to see as an actual game. Under branch. And into the forest. So I'm also liking... I like that this is first person again from the looks of it. Um, I like that because it worked so well for Seven. The third person stuff is still working really well for the remakes. And if they keep doing a mix, it's win-win, especially because both types of gameplay have served surprisingly well as Resident Evil games, not just as horror games. The first person stuff still worked great as a Resident Evil game specifically. Um, so if they if they keep giving us a mix of these things, whoa! If they keep giving us a mix of these things, I'm all about it. All about it. So that is good, isn't it? And then outside of that, we just got to, I mean, maybe I'll tack on the, if it's just looking, the PS5 away. price and reveal and all of that as well. 2021, a lot of this stuff's 2021. I don't know what they've actually got for launch. Hopefully bug snacks. It's PS5. Look at it. Look how much like a PS5 it looks. Oh. Ah. With one of these, you could almost believe you have a PS5. Ah, oh, oh, get to the fucking information that we'll have to go and double check with Jeff Keighley later. He's basically, Jeff Keighley is basically the game industry's Wikipedia. You won't get the information you need from a Star Wars film, but you'll log on and get us all fucking there. This whole showcase was the rise of the Skywalker of video game showcases. Right, prices. 500 for one with a disc drive, 400 for one with not. And apparently that's the only difference, so who the fuck cares about the disc drive? Well, and apparently that's the only difference. So if you don't give a fuck about physical media, then there's no real reason not to do this. It's certainly less confusing than the, the S and X situation. Um, whether or not that will uh, translate to a, a, a better job done at market uh, remains to be seen. That's enough from me. Bye.